Uh, hi, I'm Skinny Cheeks, and this is my Nightblade DPS guide for the Elder Scrolls Online. Starting off with the attributes, both the stamina and the Magicka-based Nightblade are viable. There will be just a few different skill choices depending on which one you want to go with. I slightly prefer Magicka if I'm going to be full range, since their Magicka-based execute is a ranged attack, while the stamina morph is a melee execute. But you can be a stamina-based ranged DPS for sure, just keep in mind you will have to come into melee range for that execute portion of the fight. For a melee setup, I think stamina based does have a slightly higher upside, but they're both very close either way. Both versions work really well, so it's up to you. Just put all your attributes into whichever route you're going. Now the infinite archive does shake this up a bit. If you're aiming to push far in there, you will want to put some points into your health. When exactly you make this change is up to you, but usually around arc seven or so is where I'll move my points into health if I'm running in a duo. If you need them a little sooner or you think you can hold off a bit later, that's totally up to you. But at some point that extra health is gonna be crucial to keep pushing. And then if you are running solo and you plan on trying to push far, you might just start off with the points into health from the get go. For the top races, nothing has really changed here in quite some time. You can go with any race in the game and complete all levels of content. These are just some examples of the top options from a pure DPS perspective. For the Mundus Stone, typically we'll be going with the Thief as a DPS for Dungeons and Trials for the Infinite Archive. Depending on your build, you may want to go with the Lady to make sure that you can hit that 33k resistance cap. But if you're already getting there without the Lady, then just stick with the Thief even in the Archive. For our consumables, starting out with the food and drinks, the most common food I run is the blue buy stat food that gives health and max resource. This just gives a ton of both of those stats. The Bewitched Sugar Skulls can also be really nice to give a little bit more of your off resource. They aren't quite as high on the health and the main stat as the blue buy stat, but they're not very far off at all and you get a bunch of that off resource to work with. So on a Magic and Nightblade for instance, that would give you a lot more stamina to play with for blocking and dodging. You could also use the free daily login reward tri-stat food as well just has slightly lower stats, but you might have a ton of them to get rid of at this point. If you do find yourself struggling with sustain, there are some options for that as well. The blue versions give the most sustain, but have no health on them, so they can be a bit more risky. And then the gold versions have a well-rounded mix of stats, but they're a bit more expensive. And then the purple versions are very cheap, but have slightly lower stats than the gold version. So really up to you here and what you're comfortable with. Then we also have the blue sustained foods that give the opposite resource recovery and these can come in handy as well to say you're on a Magicka Nightblade and you need more Stamina Sustain or a Stamina Nightblade and you need more Magicka Sustain. They don't give any health so you're going to be a little bit more squishy there but it can help fill in the gaps if that off resource is what you're struggling to sustain. And then Orzorga's Smoked Bear Hunch. This one is really common in the Infinite Archive for pushing further in there just to really sure up those recoveries on both ends to make sure that you can sustain because running out of resources can often mean dying so this still offers some health as well and then there's a cheaper purple version of this with slightly lower stats. So if you need any help crafting any of these, UESP has a great section on their website with all the recipes, but let's move on and talk about the potions. While they have fallen out of favor for many classes, the weapon and spell power potions are still pretty commonly seen on the Nightblade. These do have the downside of only returning Magicka or Stamina depending on the version you use, but they free up some bar space to fit in more skills we need, especially if the Major Brutality and Sorcery are not provided already by a teammate running Igneous Weapons. However, if this buff is provided, then really it's just the Major Savagery and Prophecy that we need to take care of ourselves, and there are some other routes besides these potions to getting that which I'll talk about in the skill section later. So that can free us up to choose some other potions here if we want to. One nice option in that case would be the try resource return potions that give back health, magicka, and stamina, and also boost those recoveries by 30%. You can craft these or just use the daily login reward versions. They're both identical, so it really doesn't matter there. These are nice to just make sure that you are able to sustain both your magicka and your stamina, regardless of which one of those is your main stat. And then the heroism potions are pretty expensive, but they're also a great option. You still get your resource return, but also a good amount of extra ultimate return as well to crank out ults just a little bit faster. And again, just remember that when you're using the tristat or the heroism potions that you need all your major buffs covered for your weapon and spell damage and your crit chance. And if you do need help figuring out how to craft any of these or any other potions, I highly recommend UESP's alchemy tool. I use it all the time when I'm trying to figure out combos and I'm not logged into the game. 
All right, now I'll go through the champion points. The main three that we'll usually slot here are Deadly Aim, Master at Arms, and Wrathful Strikes. And then that fourth slot is where you'll typically change things up depending on your situation. So first off, you could do Fighting Finesse or Backstabber here if you're coming up short of the crit damage cap of 125%. If you are way short of that crit damage cap and you could benefit from both of these, you could drop Wrathful Strikes and have both of these slotted here. Another common option is to run the Exploiter node that gives us a 10% damage boost to enemies that are off balance. This is really excellent for short burst scenarios where you have this debuff up, but even for longer encounters, if your crit damage is already in hand, as long as someone in the group is applying off balance, then it's really strong for that fourth slot there. You'll also see that players that really push damage to the max are trying to use their ultimates during this off balance window. If you don't have off balance present and you're already set on your crit damage, Thaumaturge can be okay in this slot. It's not super strong, but it's a nice fallback option. And then finally for AOE heavy scenarios such as Trash Waves, you should also swap in Biting Aura in place of Deadly Aim. All right, now I'll cover the gear options. There are a lot of great combos that work, but these will just be a few of my favorites. First off, I'll cover the setups that some of the top players in the community have found to get the highest results on the trial dummy. This means that these would work really well for mostly stationary, single target boss encounters. And I will have these parses linked in the description below. Definitely recommend checking these guys out. I'll talk a little bit more about them later. So Rai and Charles both settled on the following setup for their 136k DPS parses on the trial dummy. They both went the stamina route and got really good results with a two-piece Zahn for the monster set, five-piece Coral Riptide for the always active five-piece set, Aegis Collar for the front bar set, and then the Maelstrom two-hander Merciless Charge for the back bar weapon. Now you might wonder why they're not using a Mythic here. Well, in this specific instance on the trial dummy, you're already capped on crit damage as a Nightblade, so the kilt is not super useful. Ends up a bit behind that proc damage that you get from Zahn plus the massive amount of extra burning damage that Zahn adds in, and that does seem to be a little bit more worth it than the other mythic options. However, in actual content, while Zahn is really good on some fights, it's not always super reliable, and you'll likely get better results using a mythic item alongside a one-piece slime crawl, so that's just something to keep in mind. Lots of different fights will have a different best in slot. Aegis Collar is also a set that's not always reliable since it is a stationary AoE, so on encounters with a lot of movement, it will often not be the best choice, but for fights without a lot of movement, it hits really hard, and the results speak for themselves. As I said, both Charles and Rai got 136k DPS with this setup. You could definitely also use Reliquin here instead of Coral Riptide. It's a bit easier to manage, especially with the heavy resource drain in Execute, and it's really good for single target results. Might even do better for for most people that aren't up in that crazy high DPS range that Charles and Rai are at, and that's because Reliquin is proc damage, whereas Coral is weapon and spell damage that adds to all of your damage. So the higher you're performing, the better Coral ends up looking. Either way though, both are great options there for that always active five piece set with this setup. And then for Zwei's video, he went the Magicka route and got a really nice 133k parse. He had a similar setup, except instead of Aegis Collar, he used Berserking Warrior, also known as Advancing Yokeda. He said in the description of his video that the results with Aegis Collar were pretty similar, but he got a lot more consistently over 130k with Berserking Warrior. And this doesn't have to be a Magicka Nightblade. You could definitely use this setup on a Stamina Nightblade as well. And one reason the set works really nicely here is because you can run it on the Jewel and the weapons and you don't need any heavy body pieces since Berserking Warrior is a heavy set. However, if you do end up running a mythic that requires a jewelry slot, that will force you to run one heavy body piece if you want to do this. So just something to keep in mind there. And then he went with Reliquin here instead of Coral Riptide as a Magicka DPS. Coral is a bit of a mess to try and keep up. So Reliquin is pretty nice and easy here for great single target results. So now talking about outside of the trial dummy or maybe you need a setup that's a bit more versatile than the the way these are set up. Ansel is also a great option for both mag and stam setups for the always active set. Strong five piece bonus even without bashes and you don't have to worry about keeping up stacks like with Reliquin or keeping your stamina low like with Coral Riptide. 
Now those were the top results I found for Update 40, but there are a lot of other options that can work really well. Maelstrom two-hander is not always the best play for fights in real content, and sometimes you wanna do ranged DPS setups as well. So let's talk about a few other kinds of setups that I've gotten really good results with. First up is this bow bow setup, using the master's bow on the back bar and pillar of Nern on the front bar. You can also use the Maelstrom bow on the back bar. It's slightly less single target damage, but more AOE, and it lets you drop poison injection in that situation, which gives you a little more flexibility in the skills that you slot. Both of these work really well here though. You could also go with both of them and go with the double arena option. This has become a popular option for many other classes with update 40. Pretty similar results here as with the pillar of Nern front bar option. Then you could also do a similar setup here, except with a staff on the back bar. The Maelstrom Inferno is really nice for AOE damage. For the front bar, I'd recommend sticking with a bow if you want to do ranged, but if you do want to do a staff on the front bar, the Lightning variant will work a little bit better than Flame, since that one boosts our direct damage, which we have a ton of on the Nightblade. And then finally, one that's a little closer to that original setup with dual wield on the front bar, but you don't have to use the Maelstrom two-hander on the back bar for a melee setup. You could use a bow or a staff here as well, and still get really good results. So there's lots of flexibility on how to set up here and still get enough damage to conquer pretty much everything in the game. For those that don't have access to any trial sets yet, Order's Wrath and Pillar of Nern or Aegis Caller is a really good combo. You could also run Pillar and Aegis together if you wanted. Just keep in mind that with Aegis, you need some form of martial melee damage to trigger it, whereas with Pillar, any damage will do. But pretty flexible here with the different weapon loadouts. You can pretty much just replace one of the trial sets with Order's Wrath here for any of the setups we've already talked about. For AoE trash encounters, I really like Sulkzon as a backbone to most of my AoE trash configurations. Order's Wrath works really well paired with it, and it can be made in light or medium, so you can really customize it for your needs. For a tiny bit more burst but less sustained damage for trash encounters that might last a little longer, Briarheart or Burning Spellweave can both work really well too. Briarheart is medium and Burning Spellweave is light, so depending on how your group is set up for trash, one of those might be preferable to you over the other. For a one bar setup, I have quite a few options listed on the website, especially if you're going a heavy attack build. I'm not talking about heavy attack builds here, but for a regular light attack focused build, Pillar and Aegis again would work really well together. If you want to do a range setup, Pillar and Order's Wrath would also be a really nice combo. Not really much different here from what we've already talked about, except that we have that Oak and Soul Mythic going, and we don't need a trial set necessarily since the Oak and Soul Mythic gives us Minor Slayer. So lots of flex ability in our set pairing options. And like I just mentioned, I do have a lot of other options listed on the build page at my website at skinnycheeks.gg. So if you do want to dig a little deeper beyond my top few favorites here, maybe check that out to get some more ideas. There are examples of many other five piece set options that are good, such as Kavach Gladiator, which can be really fun for fights, which you're trying to really get through that execute phase as fast as possible. I use this in on soul hard mode just to try and help give our team a little bit more punch to get through that execute phase. And then other mythic and monster set options will be listed on there as well. Before we move on to the skills, I did want to give a few notes for the infinite archive specifically. I usually swap over to pale order at about arc four or so in a duo group. You could probably hold off a bit longer, but it just makes it really easy to stay healed up if you have pale order on, as you will start taking a little bit more damage after arc four or so. And then for solo, probably just best to have this on from the beginning. Now, I haven't personally done a ton of the infinite archive on my Nightblade, but I did want to share my friend B King setup who has been past arc 10 solo. So thank you B for letting me share this. Uh, Torg's pact is really nice to boost those enchantments, which also get boosted by the attuned enchantments vision in the archive. And it has some nice defenses on the two to four piece as well. Then serpents disdain works really well with the status effect vision focused efforts. Since we get so much extra damage from this vision, having the status effects last for a long time can be really beneficial for damage, especially solo when you need to dot stuff up and and kite around a lot. And then the Black Rose Prison dual wield for the back bar for the extra damage and defenses there. And then he was doing an ice staff on the front bar for the defenses and then also that damage shield you get for heavy attacking with the ice staff. So I've seen a pretty similar setup also run with Heartland Conqueror going instead of Serpent's Disdain. This adds a lot to those enchantments as well and it boosts up our infused trait. This really starts to take off after you get a couple of the attuned enchantments visions, but it, it's insanely powerful once you get like 
four or more of those, four or five. And the nice thing is that all of the five piece sets here are craftable, so they're really easy to put together in whatever pieces you want. And then I also have a guide out for the infinite archive, so make sure to check that one out if you want some more info on pushing far in there. All right, now we'll go through the skills. We'll start off with the stamina based night blade. So this will be a full melee setup for the front bar. First, we have barbed trap. This is a really strong dot since it reliably keeps up the hemorrhaging status effect and also keeps up our minor force buff for 10% crit damage if we're not using that Velothi mythic item. Also a nice 3% extra weapon and spell damage from it being a fighter's guild ability. Next is killer's blade. This is a really strong execute. Unlike the magic amorph, this is a scaling execute execute so it starts off with that base tool tip and then from the 50 percent health remaining onward it will scale up from zero percent additional damage to 400 percent additional damage so essentially hitting about five times as hard on those last couple of hits before the enemy dies so typically we would drop our main spammable for this around 35 percent health remaining or so however if you have the maelstrom two-hander merciless charge paired with rapid strikes as your main spammable this does hit a little bit harder than most normal spams so you will stop using that in favor of killer's blade at about 30 percent health remaining instead and then debilitate grim focus and dark shade you can stop casting those around 12 to 15 percent health remaining go ahead and refresh here if they are running out but not again after that and then you can keep up your other important dots if they will get their full duration but if you are only around that six to eight seconds left mark in the fight just spam killer's blade to finish out and don't worry about recasting them all right next up we have concealed weapon as a stamina dps we aren't using this as our actual spammable but instead we're casting it every 10 seconds for that major berserk buff that it gives for 10% more damage. It is a bit awkward for a skill like this to be used in this manner. I'm personally not a big fan of the design and I think it makes Nightblade a bit more complicated than it needs to be without enough payoff, but it is what it is and if you want to get those top DPS levels, you do need to take advantage of that buff. You'll just need to make sure you are standing in your twisting path when you cast it to get that 10% damage done bonus. Then our main spammable for the setup will be Rapid Strikes. This is especially strong when pairing with the Maelstrom two-hander on the back bar. Rapid Strikes is already a strong spammable, but having each tick of it boosted by the Maelstrom two-hander buff really makes it hit super hard and really kind of goes all in on that melee theme here too. You could also run the other morph. It actually isn't that far behind in damage since it will trigger a fair bit more hemorrhaging due to it being a bleed damage ability and it adds in a nice self heal as well so definitely an option but rapid strikes is slightly more dps next we have one of our core nightblade skills and that is grim focus both morphs of this are good merciless resolve will deal a bit more damage for single target when you are firing it but the weapon and spell damage only gets up to 300 compared to the 400 from relentless focus so relentless will hit a little weaker for that single target damage but your other abilities will hit a little bit harder potentially opening up a bit more aoe damage both are really good options i'd say run whichever one gives you the best sustain to be honest since one is stamina one is magicka you can kind of figure out what you're hurting for and then make that swap accordingly but for dummy parsing merciless resolve seems to be the more popular morph for top single target dps results then for the ultimate both morphs of death stroke are really nice soul harvest gives back ultimate whenever you kill enemies it's not as useful in trials since you're splitting kills with a lot of other people but for solo or smaller group stuff this can be really nice especially when facing a lot of enemies and then the other morph incapacitating strike doesn't give the ult but it does add in resource return whenever you light attack so essentially an extra 100 magicka and stamina every second if you are weaving light attacks efficiently so both morphs here definitely have their uses up to you to choose depending on your situation for the back bar we have debilitate here this is an okay single target dot however since it procs overcharged with each tick you actually end up with quite a bit of extra damage from the status effect there so overcharged it adds the minor magicka steal but it also ticks each time for a small bit of damage too so when you add those ticks in with the ticks from debilitate you end up with a strong dot it is only single target though so you can run barbed trap here in this slot and then put blade cloak on the front bar this does seem to be a very small loss for single target damage but extra aoe 
AOE damage and a lot of extra survival with the major evasion that it provides for 20% reduced damage taken from AOE abilities. I'd say it's probably often worth it to make that swap, so that's why I've listed the options on these first abilities on the front and back bar. Next we have Stampede. This is a crucial skill to keep up our weapon damage enchantment on our back bar and also is the trigger for the Merciless Charge set, and it's a pretty strong AOE ability on its own. Next we have Carve. This is a very strong damage over time ability for longer fights since it lasts 32 seconds once it's stacked up. You don't have to reapply it very often, which allows for a lot more time to focus on other hard hitting skills while it just kind of does its thing. And then Twisting Path is next. This is a really nice AOE damage over time ability, and it also provides major expedition for you and your teammates. This expedition is what allows you to cast Concealed Weapon on the front bar and get that 10% damage done increase for Major Berserk. And then we have Dark Shade. This is a nice pet summon ability. The summon does a mix of single target and AOE damage, and it's really nice to precast just before a fight begins or in a transition phase of a fight. It's always nice to have some abilities that hit hard that work that way, as then they don't take up quite as many in combat global cooldowns. And then finally for the back bar ultimate, you can double bar Deathstroke for the assassination passives. Meteor is also a very nice option to open the fight up with if you are confident the enemy will sit within that AOE for all of its ticks. And then Veil of Blades is actually a pretty underrated ultimate in my opinion. The damage from it is very comparable to a Fiery Rage ultimate or a Meteor. It's just more spread out since this one lasts for 15 seconds, so a little bit less burst there. And it's also a pretty small area at only 5 meters. However, it does also offer major protection to you and your allies while it's up, granting 10% reduced damage done. So this combo could make it a really nice option situationally. I used this for Onsoul Hard Mode on my Nightblade to help a group that I was in to get their clear and the reduced damage taken was noticeable while also still dealing a nice bit of damage for me. All right, next up, if you do prefer a bow setup over this melee build, most of this is pretty similar, except we'll have Lethal Arrow as our main spammable instead of Rapid Strikes, and then Endless Hail and Poison Injection as our back bar weapon abilities instead of Stampede and Carve. The rest of the setup is pretty much identical. You will have to step in periodically to drop your trap, cast your ult, and activate your concealed weapon, but most of the time can be spent at a further range with this setup. If you don't want to dip in as often, you can replace concealed weapon, though you will have a little bit lower DPS ceiling. And then if you're not doing the master's bow on the back bar, you don't need poison injection there, so you can just slot whatever you need. This becomes a flex spot in that case. And finally, for the stamina night blade, if you want to do a staff back bar, that definitely works as well. Pretty similar loadout. Silver shards is a really nice option for a front bar spammable instead of rapid strikes. Then fiery blockade is usually the morph I'd go with on the back bar for the weapon ability to keep up my weapon damage enchantment. Then we'll also have the option to run the fiery rage ultimate on the back bar since we have a staff equipped with this setup. All right, going over the Magicka Nightblade here, the setups are pretty similar. We'll just make a few tweaks. You might want to listen to that Stamina Nightblade section, even if you're playing a Magicka Nightblade, because I'm not going to repeat a lot of the same stuff we've already talked about. But for this melee setup, we can use Concealed Weapon here as our spammable, so you don't have to worry as much about that 10 second timer, since you will just naturally keep it up using it as your spammable. Then you want to make sure that you move Debilitate to the front bar, and this is because having a Siphoning ability slotted gives us 8% more Magicka. So this isn't really that important on a Stam Blade, but for a Mag Blade, you want to make sure that you have something slotted on the front bar to trigger that passive and debilitate works well. If you want a little AoE damage mixed in, you could also do Sap Essence or Power Extraction here instead. That'll give you both a single target and an AoE spammable if you need a setup that's a little bit more versatile. But whichever route you want to go, just make sure you do have a siphoning ability on your front bar. And then we'll swap over our Execute Killer's Blade to Impale. This this works a little differently in that it just kicks in at 25% health remaining at its full value instead of it being a scaling execute. And again, I do have Zwei's Nightblade parse linked in the description below. In his description of his video, he has some really nice details on when exactly he's dropping different abilities after 25% to work out this execute. So really good stuff there. Definitely check that out. And then for our back bar, pretty much the same here as before with the stamina base setup. If you do want to go ranged instead of melee, one possible option would be to use Swallow Soul as your main spammable. You'd still want Concealed Weapon to dip in and activate every 10 seconds for max damage, but Swallow Soul would trigger that siphoning passive that we were just talking about, and it also has a nice heal over time attached to it for some additional survival. 
And then this setup here is one I've been liking this patch on my Magicka Nightblade. If you don't want to use the typical weapon or spell power potions, I like Shadowy Disguise a lot to slot on the back bar. This works well if you have a tank already giving you igneous weapons for your major brutality and sorcery. And then you can get the Prophecy and Savagery on both of your bars by having this just slotted on your back bar. So in this example, it's sort of a hybrid of melee and ranged. It also has a bit of AoE, but a melee single target spam. So it's pretty versatile. Acid Spray is a really nice AoE skill that puts a strong five second dot on anything that it hits. Nightblade typically doesn't have a ton of AoE in their kit, so this just helps out with that end of things a little bit. And even on a mag blade, it isn't too tough to sustain Acid Spray at all since we can use the Tristat or Heroism Potions with this setup that give that stamina return back. All right, for those that like to swap stuff around for different encounters, we also have an AoE trash setup here. I have Camel Hunter, Blade Cloak, and then Drain Power. Either morph could work there as a Magicka DPS. Sap Essence will make this setup a bit easier to sustain since our main spammable will be Whirling Blades for the trash mobs. However, I have run the Stamina Morph Power Extraction for the debuff on my Magicka Nightblade, and it can be sustained if the trash pulls are really quick, but for extended fights, you're going to run out of juice trying to do both of those. Wouldn't be an issue on the stamina side of things though. And then Grim Focus is here just to build up the stacks for the extra weapon and spell damage. No need to fire it off. For the back bar, we have Shadow Cloak here and we'll actually be casting it for trash. Since it is slotted on the same bar as Concealed Weapon, if we cast this as our last ability before we cast our Wall of Elements on the trash pack, it will put us in and quickly pull us out of stealth, which will give us that major berserk for 10 seconds. This is pretty strong for short trash packs and then we don't have to waste a global cooldown on the AoE pack casting Concealed Weapon, which only hits one target. For the fourth ability slot there, this is a bit Bit of a flex spot leeching strikes can be nice there on a mag blade since it is a rather stam heavy loadout but there are a few different options that work well ultimately whatever you need to squeeze in there feel free and then finally i wanted to touch a bit on that power extraction skill again as well as mass hysteria these are two really unique skills for the night blade because they reduce the enemy's weapon and spell damage and while these buffs can be found elsewhere in the game they're pretty rare and night blades are the only class with the source of major cowardice in an ability with mass hysteria and only night blades and wardens have access to minor cowardice through abilities wardens do have their class set that gives major cowardice as well but night blade having both their skills skills is really nice as it means you don't have to use any special gear to keep these debuffs going. This can be really strong in some areas of the game, especially the Endless Archive. As the enemies continue to hit harder and harder, their weapon and spell damage at that base is not increasing, so debuffing that from them can do wonders to keep you alive. So I definitely recommend trying to fit these into your loadout as you push higher into the archive. For the combat rotation, I'd like to take this section of the video to recommend those YouTubers that I brought up earlier. Zwei did that Magicka Nightblade parse, and he does a lot of other top-end DPS parses as well, so definitely recommend checking his channel out. In the description of his Nightblade video, he has some tips for the rotation that I think are pretty helpful. For Stamina Nightblade, we have Rai and Charles, both getting over 136k DPS with the setups we discussed earlier. They are both consistently putting out top-end DPS results for various classes so make sure to check them out as well if you haven't already they also generally have good information and suggestions for the rotation listed in the description of their videos and i'll have all three of these guys linked in the description below well i hope this helped give you some good ideas for your nightblade as always treat all of this as a base to work from and adjust as you need for your specific situation this guide is also available in written format on my website at skinnycheeks.gg with a few more options for building your character i appreciate y'all being here and watching this if you want to connect further with me and other players i definitely recommend joining the discord server which i'll have linked in the description below big shout out to my current patreon supporters and youtube members the contributions help a ton to keep the website and YouTube channel going. And a special thanks to Nicholas, Simon, Cougars Bay and the Cougar City Guild, the Order of War Guild, Cantankerous Cat, Shady, Iffy, Blake1816, Mordecai1212, Santanico, Vadridi, Florian, Phoenix, Nalandia, Unemployed, Chriseliana, Cha Cha, Technical KO, Cap, Danco77, and Pletbron. Thanks again and see you later. Uh, bye.